Have you ever wanted to passively cool a graphics card? And not just one of those iGPU equivalent GT710 or 1030 models? For years now, I've been using aftermarket GPU coolers to passively cool 70 watt graphics cards such as the NVIDIA GTX 1650 and Quadro P2200. These cards offer a significant performance increase over the lower powered models that come with pre-installed fanless heatsinks. There haven't been any fanless models of these 75 watt cards, other than the Pallet Calm X models, which were never properly released to the North American market. Unfortunately, all of the aftermarket coolers that I have been using have been discontinued, so I've been left scouring online marketplaces for remaining stock. The coolers that I've been able to get a hold of include the Arctic Accelero S1, Arctic Accelero Twin Turbo 2, Arctic Accelero Extreme 3, Prolimatech MK26, and the Rigentech Morpheus 2 Core Edition. All of these coolers have compatibility issues with modern GPUs due to the wide variety of GPU cooler mounting hole spacing, but with some modifications some of these coolers can be made to fit properly. Due to its two sets of cooler mounting holes, the Quadro P2200 actually fits four of these five coolers out of the box, and a quick modification of the Accelero S1 made it fit as well, so the P2200 was used to compare the coolers. Only the most recent production runs of the Accelero Twin Turbo 2 and Extreme 3 would fit the GTX 1650 out of the box. Power delivery component and memory temperatures are also a concern, so small heatsinks are generally included with these coolers and should be used where appropriate. To test the five GPU coolers, I used Firmark's GPU stress test for half an hour during each run. I was also interested in how these coolers would perform in different orientations, so I tested each cooler in the standard horizontal orientation, a vertical orientation, and with the case lying flat on its back. The test system included the Spylabs Jack of All Trades case, an ASRock B550 Phantom Gaming ITX motherboard with an AMD Ryzen 5 5600X CPU, and a Fantex TC14PE CPU cooler. No fans were used in the system at all, and the fans that come with the Accelero 2 and Accelero 3 GPU coolers were not used. The Spylabs case is very passive cooling friendly, with large holes for natural ventilation, and it conveniently allows the system to be placed in the three orientations that I wanted to test. I used Hardware Info 64 to track power use and temperature data, and it was all processed in Excel to create a direct comparison. Ambient temperatures vary between 18 and 22 degrees Celsius, and I used my standard procedure to normalize results to a 25 degree ambient temperature by subtracting the ambient temperature during each data point and adding 25. Here are the results for the Arctic Accelero S1. The S1 did a great job in the standard horizontal orientation but quickly caused the P2200 to hit its maximum temperature after just 11 minutes in the vertical orientation and 17 minutes while the case was lying flat. The huge differences in the results with different orientations was surprising to me, but it was repeatable. It looks like this cooler should only be used in the standard orientation with the CPU above the graphics card. These are the results for the Arctic Accelero Twin Turbo 2 without its fans installed. The results look pretty similar to the results for the S1, but the temperatures in the horizontal orientation were about 14 degrees higher than for the S1. The Accelero 2 clearly is not as capable as the Accelero S1, and it also severely suffers in the vertical and flat orientations. Next up is the Arctic Accelero Extreme 3, without its fans installed. The Accelero 3 also performed significantly worse than the S1 in the horizontal orientation, but the Accelero 3 was able to pass the test while the case was lying flat, unlike the S1 and 2. Unfortunately, the Accelero 3 also suffered in the vertical orientation. Finally moving on to a different brand, the Prolimatech MK26 results look quite different. It also did the best in the standard orientation, but unlike the Arctic coolers, 
It did okay in all three orientations. I can't quite call it the leader so far, however, because in the horizontal orientation the P2200's temperatures were a few degrees lower with the Accelero S1. Clearly though, if you wanted to use a fanless graphics card in a non-standard case, vertically or lying flat, the Prolimatech cooler is a much better choice than all three Arctic coolers. And lastly, here is the Rigentech Morpheus 2 Core Edition. Its results were also acceptable in all three orientations, and curiously, it didn't seem to care too much which orientation it was in. It actually performed best when the case was lying flat. Unfortunately for Rigentech though, the Prolimatech cooler performed better in every orientation, and it also was no match for the Arctic Accelero S1 in the horizontal orientation. Let's look at a summary of the results all in one chart. These are the maximum temperatures recorded for each cooler in each orientation. The blue bars represent the horizontal orientation, the orange bars the vertical orientation, and the gray bars represent the flat orientation. The results in bright red indicate a failed test where the P2200 was severely thermally throttling itself. The lighter red results between 85 and 95 degrees indicate a passed test, but a case where the P2200 might occasionally experience some throttling. The results in gray are what I consider to be the ideal results, where the cooler is really well suited for the P2200 in the tested orientation. The winners here are the Arctic Accelero S1 and the Prolimatech MK26. The Accelero S1 really surprised me with how well it performed in the standard orientation, and since this orientation is by far the most common, it would be my go-to, if it were available anyway. The Prolimatech still performed well in the standard orientation, but it also performed fairly well in the other orientations, so it also came out a winner here. Here is a table of results that may be useful to some. The powers listed here indicate the average GPU power use during each test. An average power use above 60 indicated that there was no thermal throttling. The lower the average power use, the more significant the throttling. While the P2200 is rated as a 75 watt card, I never actually saw it get above 62 watts, at least not according to Hardware Info 64. A true 75 watt card will likely see higher temperatures than what is seen here. Some undervolting or power limiting may be wise in those cases. Unfortunately, the P2200 is locked to prevent users from making adjustments like these. Finally, here is a broader comparison of the coolers. The physical dimensions and weights of the heat sinks on their own are listed here. Interestingly, the two best performing coolers were the widest coolers. By width here, I mean how far it sticks outward from the motherboard. Also interestingly, the Accelero S1 is by far the lightest cooler, but it was the winner here in the horizontal orientation. The S1 is also the only cooler here that is truly designed for fanless use. The other four are all designed to be used with fans, whether or not they were included with the cooler. This just goes to show how important heatsink design can be. The S1 has more space between the fins than the other coolers. The heatsink materials and maximum P2200 temperatures in the standard orientation are also listed here. If you can manage to find one of these coolers, it might be worth a try to pair it with a 75 watt graphics card and zero fans. The Arctic Accelero S1 is a 15 year old cooler that is not compatible with any modern cards, but luckily its mounting bracket can be modified without too much difficulty with a drill press and tapping tool. I hope this info is at least interesting if not useful, and that the cooler companies can bring back aftermarket GPU coolers. It would be great if one or two of them could be designed for passive cooling, and ideally come with some kind of sliding mechanism that can make it compatible with a wide range of mounting hole distances. Let me know in the comments if you have any experience with an aftermarket GPU cooler and how it went. Thanks for watching. 
consider joining my Patreon to support this work and see details of every one of my fanless PC builds. And visit FullySilentPCs.com if you are interested in purchasing your own custom-built fanless PC. Like this video and subscribe for more fanless PC content.